A portion of this video is sponsored by Grammarly. Not long ago, I became good friends with a guy named Thomas Bragg, who was part of a trio that run the wonderful YouTube channel, Yes Theory. And we sat down to discuss decision making and the art of navigating the world that we live in. Dude, you look like Jesus. Like, do you see yourself? You're outlined in gold. Oh. Bro, what? I, I lit you so well. Yeah, this thanks. Is thanks, man. Dude. It makes me look less like Jeff Daniels. I appreciate that. In today's video, uh, I was able to sit down with God. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That would be an amazing video. Actually, you're going to die in 10, 9, 8, <laughs> oh, <no>. 7. <laughs> Wait, stop. Hold on. Is there anything I can do? <laughs> All right, so clearly we're two dumbasses, but I thought the conversation that we had was amazing and I wanted to share it with you. I hope you enjoy. How do you know you're making the right decisions? Like, what are the things you're thinking about? What are the tools that you use? to know this is a good decision, this is not a good decision. Because sometimes it's split second, it's in the moment. Right. I've just forced to be a little more relaxed about decisions mm. in a way. You know, I've forced to be like, I'm a total overthinker. Like I get very easily stuck in like left brain trying to analyze every option, every situation, all the different ways that this decision can lead to potentially negative things in my life. Yeah. And now I'm trying to be a little bit more intuitive because I feel like my intuition has told me, has shown me the path multiple times and I decided to not do it because I was overthinking, I was scared or I hesitated. And then afterwards I'm like, I should have listened. Like mm. I, I knew the answer. So, One of the things you're focusing on is more intuition. More okay. intuition. Um, what do you mean by that? Like checking in with yourself? I feel like I saw that the other day. Yeah. You were checking in with yourself. You said to me something that was very interesting that I really, really liked. You're like, I just want to make sure that this decision was my own. Yeah. You know, that this wasn't made by somebody else. Yep. Or that I got pressured into it or, or yep. what have you. Yeah. I love that because it's, it's beautifully put. It's very succinct mm. and it's still very difficult. Like yeah. it's something you have to constantly check in about because yeah. things can move very quickly. I've let external circumstances make me so unhappy for the past like year and a half. Oh my God, yeah. Uh, like business problems that are kind of out of my control. Yeah. Um, I mean, COVID, you know, I think every single person in the world has been affected by that. Yeah. Um, I I've just let external factors highly influence my happiness. Yeah, yeah. Which has influenced my, the quality of my relationships, which has influenced my happiness back in return, you know? Yeah. So it's like trying to be like wishing for things that I can't control to be a certain way. And then over time, exhausting all energy that I have to actually work on the things I can control. Yeah. Because I've exuded so much anxiety and stress on pointless things, you know? Yeah. And so I think coming to terms with like, okay, like being better at, dis at distinguishing what I can control and what I can't, you know? And um, I'm not being so upset about the things that I can't control when I'm like, oh, I wish things were different or stop wishing that things, when is this pandemic going to be over, you know? Yeah. I think it's just, you, you, there's certain things that aren't ours to, to, to decide. I think you've also sort of moved on to a new stage of your life where the old rules don't apply anymore. You yeah. know, maybe at one point it did make sense to really like hustle and grind and, and try to make things happen. Yeah. But you're, you're, you're in a different place, dude. You're like, you, you've, you've accomplished a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just get the sense that I'm going through the same thing where it's almost like, yeah, this intuition, this thing that I kind of pushed aside for a long time, it'll actually help me navigate this next stage of my life mm. if I listen to it. Yeah. And I, uh, and I allow myself to take risks and I allow myself to surprise myself really. Yeah. Um, and be more in touch with that instead of fighting against it. Mm. Um, it's interesting how that changes, right? What you were saying about how you're in transitioning into a place of recognizing that there was a period that got you to where you are now yeah and now you're having to change your strategy a bit yeah. to actually continue growing it's like the, the quote that says you know what got you here won't get you there yeah which is like your, your strategy has to change over time like the, the, the Paul Graham startup advice is do things that don't scale so like the Airbnb the guys that started Airbnb yeah they uh, uh, manually themselves went to they noticed that bad photos led to no like bookings yeah. So they themselves went and said, we'll take photos for you for free to make your photos look better on the website. Right. 
uh, and that made no, there was no way that would scale. Like right. the founders can't be taking photos, but they couldn't afford to pay photographers to go do it. So they did it themselves. Just you know? to get the ball rolling. Just to get the ball rolling. It'd be like, let's just, on, on the people that have listed the web, on the website, let's take nicer photos. Yeah. And that skyrocketed bookings. And then now there's a system for it. But to start, you got to do some things that aren't going to last. And then you got to be ready to recognize when it's necessary to change and then figure out how to do that. And that's easier said than done because when it's your personal habits, when it's the way you've operated, oh yeah, when it's your creative comfort zone or your survival mechanisms, it's hard to be like, cool, I'm not going to worry about this anymore or I don't have to. And yeah. uh, it's difficult, especially, when, I don't know how you do it when you're alone, you know, like a, a solo creator is a different thing because it's intense, dude. Much more is on your shoulders. It's intense, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Taking breaks and unplugging from that time is super important because if you get too wrapped up into what's going on, it's almost like you're lost at sea and mm. the waves are just too powerful. Like you, you, there's nothing you can do about it. You, you're, you're, you're stranded. You cannot control what people will say. In a counterintuitive sense, whenever I'm feeling least productive and I'm feeling just worn down, yeah. the answer is not buckling down. Right. And like, and I'm, I'm saying generally, yeah. it depends, yeah. but it, the answer is not buckling down and being more brutal with myself. Right. It's more like, you know, disconnect, change, change things yep. up a little bit. Before diving into the rest of my conversation with Thomas, I wanted to thank Grammarly for sponsoring this portion of the video. Grammarly is basically a digital writing assistant. I personally am insanely prone to spelling mistakes and typos and whatnot, and it is always there to help prevent me from sounding more unintelligent than I already am. First of all, Grammarly is available as a browser extension. I have it on Chrome and it also works on Gmail and Google Drive. So if you ever send me an email with typos, I'm gonna know that you aren't using Grammarly. The free version helps with basic grammar and spelling suggestions, but the premium version does way more than that. It checks the tone of your writing and gives feedback on how you're coming across and how you can improve the clarity of your writing, for example. Seriously, if you write just about anything on a daily basis, this is worth it, it's a good tool to have. Grammarly is a must have in your life. Make sure to sign up for a free account with my link, grammarly.com slash Nathaniel Drew. And if you love it as much as I do, you can use the same link to get 20% off Grammarly Premium, which unlocks clarity suggestions, vocabulary suggestions, and more. Thanks to Grammarly for sponsoring that portion of the video. Now back to our conversation. And I don't know, I just like how the Buddhists talk about the middle way, just moderation really, yeah. which is something we so seriously lack in this world today. Yeah. Um, but also extremes are are very easy to get pulled towards. Yeah. Right. Because it's more interesting that way in some cases, I guess. And I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's people binging social media. People binging with food. Binging with food. Yeah. It's a lot of binging going on. Binging with shows. Exercise. Yeah. Dude. Or yeah, everything can be an addiction. Binging with productivity. I mean, that's the thing. Like anything can be extreme. Yeah. Um, I, I do agree with that idea of balance and because I think um, too much of just the same thing over and over can can become kind of product productive on its own. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. the experience of being challenged stops being that if you're permanently challenged. If you're permanently in a state of I have no idea what's going on around me, <laughs> you know, then that's just the way the state that you live in. You know? Well yeah, that's the thing. It's almost like if you don't have time to reflect and figure out what you just went through. Mm. You're, you're, per, you're, I think you're permanently in survival mode. Yeah. You're like, I'm just going to react to what's happening to me yeah. right now just so I can survive. Yeah. You know what? Uh, reflect is a very important word because I think that's something that we weren't doing well for a while. Yes, theory. Yeah. As yes, theory. Oh, that's really interesting. Because there's so many experiences that, you know, one after the other that are all amazing and you feel so spoiled by the opportunity. Right. But at the same time, like, by the time you're done with one, like, imagine tomorrow I was starting to film something new like a new, totally new thing, right? With new people and they're, they're amazing and you feel like you want to connect with them, but you just like have barely processed what just happened. Yeah. Um, that's what it started to feel like for a while. And the, 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 the shitty thing about that is it feels like it commoditizes genuine interactions, discovery. Like you want these experiences to feel special, but when yeah. they're just all the time, and that was the balance issue, you know, because we were trying to keep up with a video a week, two videos a week. And, um, yeah, you get locked into a certain something. Yep. That's an, just right there. Another example of being locked into something yep. that works. Yeah. But if you keep going down that path forever, 
you're, you're not giving yourself the room and space to right. innovate and change. And now what you guys are doing is more sophisticated, more creative, mm -hmm. more... Well, we're trying to take more time to make the videos yeah. really good and yeah. actually have time to exp like to rest between experiences so that we get like really hungry for more when mm -hmm. we're ready to go again. You know, because I think it's it can be, yeah, counterintuitive, like too much experience can be bad, right? And that's what we were saying with yeah. like, if you live in a permanent state of trying to figure out what's happening, that just becomes normal. Yeah. That's basically what happened to us. You know, we were just permanently in discomfort. <laughs> so you're like, I just want a nap. <laughs> you know, I just want to yeah. be comfortable for a minute. Cause like literally I haven't stopped being in an environment where I'm like totally challenged 24 seven. And that's amazing. Like so much growth happens through that. Yeah. But if you don't have the re reflection afterwards, you know, it, it, it starts to lose its, you start to disconnect with the why of, like, yeah. why am I here, yeah. you know? So I was going to ask you about that. Like, did you find that your decision making got poorer in those periods? Like, it was negatively affecting how you were making decisions? I think it was just negatively affecting my, like, happiness, you know? Wow. Like, I just reached a point. Like, Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That you were overdoing it on something that... Yeah. And, and almost everybody would agree is, is an a amazing good thing. thing. Like, yeah. But you even overdid that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, It's really strange, but that's like basically what happened. It's so hard to convey that message. Oh, but, I mean, you feel so spoiled and like, it's an amazing, I'm not complaining about it, but it's just us having to learn that, I think has made us now better decision makers. And, you know, I, I think I, I was living in this state of like, one day things will change. You know, this is not my permanent life. Right. And then that Man, lasted so long. I had so those long. thoughts too. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, Postponing. I'm gonna change things in the future, but right now oh I just God. have to do this. That is such a, a an incredibly um, like sneaky excuse that you can make to yourself. Yeah. Where I I lived a super imbalanced lifestyle for a long time, where I had like no social life, mm. uh, was not in a relationship, was not going out and doing fun things. I was just mm. like, I'm gonna get my career going. And yeah. in a sense, it paid off. Yeah. It really did get things going. But in another way, it's sort of like, how long can you say to yourself? You, okay, this will change eventually. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, you know, I'll stop doing this. Right. But then you have to actually do it, right? Like, it's fine it's to go through dangerous. those periods. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then you can lose track of, it just becomes normal, and then you actually kind of become addicted to it. Oh, yeah, dude. You know, you feel like you're only productive if you create this kind of stress and anxiety. Right. So for a while, you know, I'd hang out with friends or, you know, be with a girlfriend, and I'd be freaking out. I'm like, I'm not, why am I not working right now? Right. You know, dude, and it's like oh, Saturday man. night, and I'm watching a movie, and I'm like, what's my thumbnail for tomorrow? Like I need to probably, and I would go to the bathroom and just like, <laughs> yeah, dude. you know, just like, I'll be right there. Yeah, man. I mean, you're laughing and I'm, and, and I think it's hilarious what you're saying. And at the same time, I think it's hilarious because I relate to that so much yeah. and I'm still like working through it. Kind of yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. kind of like, kind of like, this is why I think I'm speaking out so much about how dangerous productivity can be and how mm. much of a lie it is in a sense. Mm. Like you think you are, upgrading the quality of your life yeah. in a sense it can be the exact way to decrease the quality of your life yeah um well, do you think productivity also needs to be like redefined or defined in a way where i mean i think we all have to define it personally for ourselves because somewhat you can qualify quality time as with a partner or a friend as productive oh absolutely right? dude the creative process is i think it's almost like an entire lifestyle right. it's like all of the time that you take off from work, uh, the times that you're like washing the dishes, I don't have a dishwasher in Paris, so I nice. hand wash everything. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that is creative time for me and it's very productive. Like I have right. all kinds of interesting ideas. Um, you need those pauses, you need yeah. those breaks. I think the tough thing is you still got to unplug your thoughts a little bit, right? It's, so yeah. when you're doing the dishes, it's fine. Right. But if you're in a conversation with a, with a friend or a partner or you're watching a movie or hanging out, yeah like not leaving your brain in overdrive, I think that becomes like a hard thing to turn off. Oh yeah. You know, when you're used to being like on high alert all the time, Yeah. then learning how to be like, okay, I'm gonna like sit down and I can chill. I know how to chill. <laughs> how do kids do this? <laughs> I'm honestly still trying to figure out ways, like methods. I mean, again, the reason why I'm talking about this so much is because I'm still trying to find ways to slow down because mm. it's so addictive to go fast. Yep. It's so addictive to feel excited about growth and expansion and I'm gonna do this and that. And uh, yeah, dude, I don't know. You almost have to fight against your impulses, yep. right? Because 
I mean, I, I know that when I took a month and a half off of social media, the first week was super uncomfortable. I was like, what am I doing? This is the <laughs> dumbest decision I've ever made. <laughs> and then afterwards, it was like the best uh, like five weeks mm. I've had in a long time. It was unbelievable. What changed? A, a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders. Mm. I think it helped accelerate this shift I'm trying to make away from uh, just valuing myself based off of... Um, the things that I create mm. and the numbers that, atta- that are attached to it. Yeah. And without a break like that, it's really, really hard to shift priorities and mm. shift gears mm. into a new direction. Mm. Um, I think you've done the same, right? You've had moments of pauses from uploading and yep. sharing stuff yep. so you guys could get a clear idea about what you were about yeah. and what you wanted to do, right? Like reset. I did 30 days, no social media as well, and it was weird because it was at a time where I was Instagram like, an hour, like two hours a day, you know? And it's just like, you don't, it's not like, you don't, you don't, it's like 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, you know? It's like, it becomes impulsive and then it adds up to a lot of time. But it's always, it's constantly ruining your mood, I feel like. Yeah. It's kind of like, like, I'm. there's this sort of like, behind, back of my head pressure, like, oh my God, they are having tons of fun and they're having tons of fun. Yeah. And I'm just unable to be present in my own experiences. Mm. Like, even in situations that could be fun if you were just present, I mean, any experience can, then, like, you would be happier. Yeah, And yeah. a lot of the people that are oversharing are probably not that happy because they're checking their phone all the time. Right. Or yeah. Not, you know, it's, it's, uh... It's such a catch-22. And it's not that you're a shitty person. Like, I don't think right. I'm a low-quality person for feeling jealous and envious i think it's just, it's just I'm trying to create the right environment right. so that it's not constantly do you me. find that going on social media since you started to since your job has become on social media has become like more stressful oh because you yeah, see what man. other people are doing and you're like damn i haven't posted in three weeks and then you see a person post the third video this week and you're like yeah 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 dude i'm a f- loser <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. how have i not uploaded this month <laughs> yeah dude yeah it's been insanely uncomfortable for me to shift so far this year it is the end of February. So far this year, I posted two videos on my main <laughs> channel. I, I, at the beginning of 2019, I did that in one week. Like, this is a huge shift. And yet, I think I have to take into consideration the things that you cannot measure. Like, I think the quality of what I'm creating is much greater. I think it's having more of an impact. Yeah, man, I don't know. I do think that posting on social media has become incredibly stressful. Yeah. Because. You know, when you are pouring your soul into something, you want it to work. You want it to, you yeah. want it to be seen. Um, this is just reinstating the importance of reflection. Yep. Like, you have to step out of whatever you're doing from time to time. Yeah. If it's or, not working, continuing to just doing the same thing is. Dude, tunnel vision is the worst. Yeah. It's the worst. Yep. It'll ruin you. Yeah. This is why people burn out. This mm. is why people. Um, I don't know, people get stuck doing the same thing for their entire lives. It's because it's just a question of perspective. If you could see the bigger picture, you would, I think, there's so many different things that you would take into consideration, things that you would do, your decisions would change. Um, And so I feel like so much of life is literally just developing the tools and techniques to give yourself perspective when you lose Mm. it. Mm. Because it's so hard to have perspective on things. Absolutely. Even when you're, like when I'm hungry, Mm. when I'm tired, Right. I have the worst decision making skills totally of anybody anywhere. Yep. Um so it's almost like I'm fighting against myself really to give myself the best odds. Absolutely. No, it is I think like when when you're looking for a solution for something and you've been trying one method for a while uh, or you're tired and you're worn down, like you have to try to exit that intentionally. Otherwise, you're not going to find the solution, mm. right? And I think with creativity as well, I think if you're, if everyone watches Wes Anderson's movies and that's their inspiration, everyone's movie is going to look the freaking same, yeah. right? Like everyone's inspired yeah. by Wes Anderson. Great, you know? Yeah. But like go watch things that are like, watch mangas, right? Yeah. Like we, you were talking about how you started to watch mangas. Yeah. Do that. Anime, you know? yeah. Anime, it's a world like, I don't understand. Anime, sorry, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's totally different. Like com- different style, different music, different storytelling different everything mm. and now this is a whole new category of movies that you can gain inspiration from yeah and um i think with life similarly like if you're doing something that's just not working like it's worth 
trying something different or taking a break to rest yeah and come back you know okay you're not you know you've disconnected from this thing yeah and a lot of the time like you know you come up with your ideas in the shower because you're relaxed you're not it's not your left brain. It's like you actually release that and it becomes a right brain, like intuitive feeling. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, it, and it's in your subconscious. It just finally has enough room to rise. Yeah. I mean, dude, we underestimate the power of human creativity. And yeah. I think the thing is we get in our ways mm. so much. Mm. Uh, it's almost like disengaging the, the more developed, higher brain that you've got mm. that where you're thinking about things and worrying about stuff yeah. and you're spinning like this like disengaging it from some from time to time turning it off mm. so that yeah that subconscious that like raw creative brain that has evolved over centuries and millennia yeah can do its thing i yeah. mean it's it's kind of incredible the hardware that we're equipped with yeah did you watch a lot of youtube growing <laughs> up like were you like a youtube fan i guess i i wasn't like an early consumer of YouTube, but probably starting in 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. I started to consume it a lot more. Mm -hmm. And there were a few content creators that really got me thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And then and then I started making videos in 2015. But mm -hmm. I've always been more uh, uh, creation focused than mm -hmm. consumption focused. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, again, I don't know if this is a bad source of self-worth but I feel way better having made something awesome than having yeah. watched something awesome. No, absolutely. <laughs> I think that's a much better feeling, absolutely. So, no, I'm just wondering, because for me, like I went from being, like YouTube was like my main source of entertainment. You know, some people watch TV, some people do whatever, like I, I, for me it was YouTube. Wow, really? Yeah, I grew up, like since 2007, it's like I would come home from school and I would check YouTube, like on my little Bob Boxy laptop. Yeah. So you watch like the garbage that was that was Yeah, first. and I, I watched like I, I knew I saw every single of the first channels like I saw the first channel hit a million subscribers like I was I was there. Wow. And I, you know for me Was that who was that Smosh? Fred. Fred was the first one? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So it was really interesting going from Dude, that Fred. to then now having a channel like I, I still don't haven't fully connected how actually full circle it is and how if I were to look at myself like if 10 years ago I could look at my channel now, like I, I wouldn't be able to fully process that that's real. Yeah. And, but the day to day becomes so normal. And I don't know, you just, like the fact that this has become my job, sometimes I'm like, is that me? <laughs> like, is that, am I who I am? Like who, how is this, how is this my life? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> that is exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. Like, how do you navigate those periods of surprise where you're, where, you things change so drastically right. that it's almost like you're it's a new lifetime essentially yep. you've exited one life yep. you'll never go back to that yep. and you're in a new life now yep um how do you how do you navigate that like do you have like uh how do you process these sorts of things because yeah because i think we all go through it right yeah when you do make a decision that you never expected to make before it can be positive again it can be negative you know yeah. it could be like wow, I'm so proud of myself for doing this. And it can also need a moment to be like, what did I just do? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like what, how is this, how am I, is this me going in this direction? <laughs> like getting this tattoo, you know? I'm like, did I just get a fifth tattoo that I didn't put any thought into? <laughs> like I went from being somebody who like, if you'd asked me at 18, I'd be like, I would never get a tattoo. Like no chance. In, in, in some ways, like why can't that change? You know, why can't your perception of yourself evolve over time? Like, well, it's it, scary. It, it always does. Yeah, it is. It's scary, dude. For sure. You have like a sense of who you are. Yeah. And there's a, there's a real sense of security that I think comes with that. And I think evolutionarily it makes complete sense to want to feel safe and secure. It gives you a bit of a framework for how you make decisions, right? It's kind of like, because uh, otherwise every time you have to think about who you are, but if you have a relatively, like if right. you have a mental map of like, these are the kind of decisions that I do. These are the kind of right. things that I order. These are the things that I like. I could, and that, and that becomes- It's like a shortcut. That, yeah. It's so efficient. it's like, you don't have to think, yeah, it's efficient. Because otherwise, if every time you have to think from scratch about, what kind of person you are, you know, and so, and sometimes you, you, you know, you take a different road and you're like, whoa, okay. I just changed my map a little bit yeah. of who I am. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's helpful to do these sorts of things. Like if you have a bad interaction with a certain kind of, in a certain kind of circumstance, it's good to know. 
and then you don't do it again, right? Yeah. But then yeah. that might change. 10 years later, it might actually be a good experience. Yeah. That's the thing that's sort of like, I don't know that I'm fine, I'm navigating. I feel like as a kid growing up, mm. I always thought to myself, adults kind of have things figured out. Like they've sort of answered the questions that they've got mm -hmm. and that's it. And as an adult now, I'm like, that was a fucking lie. Yeah, <laughs> like, people have I no was, idea what they're doing. I was so wrong about that. I don't even think we can see you that much anymore. Um, I'm blown that. out. Well, it's just this, yeah. There you go. Look like here. That's You're suddenly perched on camera. a on a route like way over there. <laughs> <laughs> Fixing so, the frame. So there we go. Anyway, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so why exactly do you sit like this? I heard this contributes to uh, this mental clarity. Is mental and... clarity. I actually heard Buddha sat like that <laughs> yeah. when he became enlightened. You do put your decision making abilities to the test a lot. You yeah. throw yourself in all kinds of difficult situations. You're telling me about the time you got a tattoo from a 12 year old. I don't know many people that would like be cool with that, you know? <laughs> I think that's awesome. But if I think about myself, I'd be like, whoa. Sometimes you just gotta play with the mold, you know? It's like you have a set thing and you gotta see where its boundaries are sometimes yeah. and test it and see if you like it. You know, maybe you don't, maybe you do. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's kind of how you actually fine tune your own intuition or your own, your own ability to make good decisions. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, with everything, you gotta, once in a while, you gotta try something new and see what happens. Yeah. And uh, so I try to do that once in a while. You know, I, I used to be very particular with when I have my meals, when I go to sleep, how I do things. And then I, I think sort of traveling rigid. and yeah, and I, it's actually loosening my grip on how I like to do things. Yeah. You know, now I can go a whole day without really eating much. If my brain is like, we're not going to eat today, I'm like, all right, we're not eating, I guess, today. You know, oh or like, <laughs> we're on a train and all we have is nuts. And it's like, <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to eat a bag of nuts. <laughs> oh, my God. The amount, the amount of travel stories that he has is unbelievable. I mean, it's just like, 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 honestly, dude, I think that is the benefit of throwing yourself into insane situations. Yeah, I mean, now I'm like, oh I'm like, I'm easy now. I used to be way more picky with things and I like being less picky. Like, I don't think being picky made me actually very happy you i mean know? i uh, see this is tricky because i'm a really picky person right and i think it's but, i'm glad but, that i but am pick on the things you're picky about yeah true right? yes you can't be picky about everything for sure but i'm glad that, that i'm picky about certain things yeah because it pays that's off that's good that pays off and you are sure. picky about some stuff i'm very picky about the ideas most, the most picky thing i am is ideas and i will not compromise for what you create yeah. for the thumbnail yeah. it mm. sounds like you're picky about the things that really matter to you yep um, and so your decisions, you're very painstaking about it. Yeah. And then it makes all, the vast majority of other decisions you have to do throughout the day. Like, okay, whatever, whatever's the easiest. Yeah. Right. Any final thing you'd like to say to my audience, to the world on this topic of decisions or anything else that we touched on? Yeah. Like, don't be afraid to once in a while check in and test things and experiment. You know, if you're like 18 and you think you've got your life figured out or 19, you know, I, I would say like loosen the grip a little bit and then find some balance. And if you're somebody who's got like no structure whatsoever, you know, and you need some, some balance, then that's a tough thing. And it's just like a, a practice, right? And it's starting mm -hmm. really small, right? Like it's not about doing 20 minutes of meditation twice a day in cold showers and journaling and everything at once. It's just like, five minutes of meditation you know bit by bit baby steps and i think people need different different advice you know people yeah. need different things based on where they're at totally. who they are uh, like what their aspirations are and i think for people like you and i who tend to be more intense we need to be told relax <laughs> you know and some people that are very relaxed need to be told you know come on like move a little bit you know <laughs> and so i think it's just check in with where you're at don't be afraid to to to, to move things around and, and try things out that are different yeah and um you might come back around and think hey the way that i'm living my life is actually i'm very content but you can be more solid in that but exactly having you tested know. other things out yep exactly yeah. and i think that's um i think it's what what keeps life exciting you know the possibility yeah. of reinventing yourself shouldn't be a scary and nerve wracking thing. It should be an exciting thing. It's yeah. like, cool, I can actually redefine who I am. And it's even an though opportunity. It's an opportunity and that's terrifying based on, you know, whoa, am I changing my values, who I am, how people see me? But at the end of the day, I think you're gonna end up at actually a, a pure and more genuine version of 
who you really are, mm. you know? And uh, I think that requires taking a few of the smaller detours along the way to figure out how to, how to properly move forward in a, in a pace and in a direction that you will truly find joy in. And um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I'm trying to do right now. You it's know, I'm message, seeing that yeah. from a place of, of, of being in the process of doing that and of being in a place of trying to, that's why I grew my hair out. Really? I've had the same haircut for 10, for 12 years before this. And I was like, wow. you know what? I'm going to grow my hair out because I've been so attached to literally getting the exact same haircut for 12 years. Yeah. And I want to, I want to change how I physically look. Yeah. I want to, you know, and I bought some new clothes because I'm like, I've had the same sweaters for five years. Yeah. And even though I, you know, I'm, I, I, I do enjoy not being a shopaholic. I was also like, I'm 27, you know, <laughs> like I don't need to wear the same jacket I wore when I was 21. You yeah. Know? Like I kind of want to change a little bit and, and feel like I'm actually uh, transforming in, in ways. And yeah. you know what? I've realized that I, this hair's not going to work, so <laughs> I'm going to cut it back. But you know what's great too? <laughs> but now I know. <laughs> you know what's great too though? You like totally do not take yourself very seriously. Like you're constantly making fun of it, which is awesome. Like. You, you know that this... Because <laughs> otherwise I know you will. <laughs> I need to... I need to yeah. You're not going to get to roast me. I'm roasting yeah. myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. caught me on the acne. You know, <laughs> and I was like, damn it. And you're blaming it on hair products. It's what you're eating, bro. Dude, I'm eating fine. <laughs> Sausage and bread and yeah. alcohol. And beer, yeah. a great diet. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, man. So, Dude, yeah. thank you for doing this, man. This was this super is, fun, man. Yes. Seriously. I don't know if we're in frame at all. I don't know. It's so good talking with you, dude. Like, I, I just relate so intensely to your thought processes and I'm how you formulate, here. you know, your 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 view of the world. And I think it's just exciting. Every time I talk with you, I'm like buzzing with energy. I feel like on these sorts of topics because I'm like, yeah, you're totally right, you know? <laughs> and I'm just like, I just feel like it's so easy to riff off of that. Yeah. So anyway, dude, really appreciate it. But yeah, man, so, like I, I feel the same with you. I think just uh, hearing you speak and every time we've hung out, I feel like we haven't been able to stop talking. And that's a good sign, you know? Yeah. Like we're both always ripping on each other. We're also having like, we can go on like three hour tangents on a random topic. Dude, not three hours. We did like six, seven hour yes. tangents. Yeah, the first <laughs> night we were like up until 3 a.m. Oh my God. <laughs> and, I literally arrived at, I think it was 6.30. Yeah. I left at 2 a.m. Like yeah. that's an eight hour yeah. <laughs> session. Eight hour conversation. Oh my God, dude. Yeah. There's, a, there's just so many topics that, you know, I think we relate to each other in that it's uh we find new ones and then we're like we haven't talked about this yet yeah um from filmmaking to like lifestyle to self-improvement all oh, of these yeah. different topics like are endless like you know wormholes of conversation yeah, so because we've just had different paths in life but very yeah. similar missions i think and yep. so it's kind of cool to like compare data yeah you absolutely know? hell yeah man ow wow, oh my, my ass oh my knees oh my stiff. god I haven't moved my knee in. My ass cheeks, dude. <laughs> dude, the roots were just Whoa. stabbing my ass the entire time. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. That's how you know you're getting old when your knee is like, oh. <laughs> I need a yoga class or something.